Hey! How's it going, you fiends? I'm demi Bow baby. And I'm dead inside. Hmm. Why did I emphasize inside? So that people aren't confused that you might be dead on the outside also, and that you're actually just a corpse. Not a corpse. <laughs> Hashtag not a corpse. <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of 13 Dead Days of Fiendly Fright. Ooh, first try. <laughs> Today, Demi's reading. Wow. Demi, what are you reading? I'm going to read The Devil in the Belfry by Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Every time I hear a belfry, it just reminds me of... Uh... Hunchback of Notre Dame. Nope. Notre Dame. It's Dom, nope. not Dame. Bright Eyes. What song is that? We must hang out in the belfry where oh. the bats and moonlight laugh. Must look into a crystal ball and only see the past. What song is that one? And in the caverns of tomorrow with just our flashlights and our love, we must plunge, we must plunge, we must plunge. And when we get down to the bottom of everything, oh, we'll see it, we'll see it. The bottom of everything. Bottom of yep. Okay. As soon as you said the bottom of everything, I was like, yep, there we go. Roll credits. <laughs> Roll credits. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, me read. Me never read story. Fuck. I really got to stop tiny to small talking. Return to monkey talk. Yeah, I got to stop doing that. It's going to start happening unironically, and I just can't have that. What? What what? What what? <laughs> what what? In the butt. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to read The Devil in the Belfry. I've never read it before, but it sounds spooky. Devil's in the name. Belfry is pretty creepy too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Devil in the Belfry. Is this about Hunchback of Notre Dame? Is this just what this is about? Maybe. I guess we'll find. I don't know. I've just heard of it. Just I don't. I don't know anything about it. Quick poll. Before we're reading The Devil in the Belfry, let us know in the comment section below how many of you guys have read The Devil in the Belfry before? Because me and Demi never have. It's new here for me. What? For me, too. <laughs> new. That weird mouth <laughs> fart sound. Mouth sounds. You ready? I'm... I was born ready. Okay, I'm take a drink. I water. love being read to. I've decided. <laughs> yeah, me too. You're wait, what? You're the one reading. Yeah. Oh, you decided after reading. You hate reading out loud. You like being read to. It feels a little bit like I'm nervous. It's like a similar nervous feeling of like when I was in high school and we'd all have to read a passage out of the book. And then I would just do that really weird anxious thing where I'd keep rereading the passage that I would think I was reading. But then it turns out I was actually reading like a different passage. Out loud? Yeah. I always volunteer to read out loud. Um, I started doing that like near the end of my high school career. I'd like volunteer to go first. So I knew what I was like reading and then it was just out of the way and then the teacher wouldn't call on me and there was like no uncertainty. I didn't like it. It stressed me out. Because then you, like, fumble over words, and you, like, don't really have the right cadence when you read. And then I feel like everyone's judging me, even though they're not listening. They're literally just probably sleeping. Or spacing out. Yeah, or spacing out. Like, they don't care, but... It's when you throw in random words like fart, <laughs> you know? You're like, wow. quote the raven, fart. Fart. See if anyone notices. Fart. <laughs> fart. Fart. Oh, there's a Dutch word. That's <laughs> fucked up, dude. Oh, let me see it. I think I know the word. It's like voten visken visemizen. Wonder votemitentis. Wonder votemitis. I'm sorry, why did you go out a Dutch word so confidently, but you can't do that with English? Because <laughs> English isn't my first language. <laughs> Wonder votemitemis. I don't know. Just say it really fast like that. <laughs> it sounds confident. Wonder votemitemis. Everybody knows, in a general way. Well, what are we reading? I already fucking told you. You got to tell. You got to start it off. Yeah, you got to say, "The Devil in the Belfry." <sighs> Come on, reading one hundred and one. I already said I was reading it. Like when. Yeah, oh. but it's what I do. It's like I, I've done it all, every time. Am I you? No, sir. It's the name of the channel. Why am I here then? 
What's the name of the channel? We do things the dead inside way on this channel. <clears throat> the fart in the belfry. <laughs> 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 Fucking obstinate to the end. The devil in the belfry. There we go. By Edgar Allan Poe free. <laughs> <laughs> Such a shit. <laughs> okay, for real this time. Oh, that wasn't for real? <laughs> okay. Okay, for real, friends. Okay, for real? Oh my god, I'm sweating. Are your palms sweaty? Knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on your spaghetti already, mom spaghetti spaghetti. <laughs> there was a guy that was like, if Eminem's mom would just make spaghetti sauce, she'd make a lot of money. Like, if um, she sold spaghetti Eminem sauce. Eminem started a sh uh, fast food chain called Mom Spaghetti. Shut the fuck up. No. How do we go there? There's no way this is real. This has to be a fucking meme. Eminem spaghetti shop opens in his hometown of Detroit. Eminem surprises fan at opening of Mom Spaghetti. Grand opening of Eminem's Mom Spaghetti restaurant. This has to be fake. This can't be real. I like want it too bad. Get your sweaters ready, Detroit. Mom Spaghetti is coming to 2131 Woodward Avenue. Want some road pasta after the game? Got that. Meatballs? You know we got that. What about the Sketty Sandwich? Mom's got that too. Get ready to get some Mom's Spaghetti, Detroit. Opening in the alley next to the Union Assembly this September. 313-888-8388. Mom's Spaghetti. It's all ready. Ready, 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 ready. There's no way. Okay. Wait, was that Eminem? Yeah. There's no way. I want it too bad. It can't be real. The Devil in the Belfry by Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, we know what you're reading. You already said it. <laughs> the fucking audacity. <laughs> Everybody knows, in a general way, that the finest place in the world is, or alas, was, the Dutch borough of Van der Vonten Mittermis. Yes. Flawless execution of pronunciation on that. Thank you. I studied Dutch for 16 years. No cap. At the University of Dutch Studies. Yods. <laughs> Uds. That sounds Dutch. I'm Dutch. That's the lie. She's a liar. Can't trust anything that comes out of her mouth. Last night in fucking ch chat, she was spewing lies. Sir, chill. Can we make it a paragraph? Yeah, can we? Yet as it lies some distance from any of the main roads, being in a somewhat out-of-the-way situation, there are perhaps very few of my readers who have ever paid it a visit. For the benefit of those who have not, therefore, it will only be proper that I should enter into some account of it. And this is indeed the more necessary, as with the hope of enlisting public sympathy in behalf of the inhabitants, I design here to give a history of the calamitous events which have so lately occurred within its limits. No one who knows me will doubt that the duty thus self-imposed will be executed <laughs> to the best of my ability. <laughs> <sighs> this is going to be a long story. My mouth is so dry and like creepy. <laughs> Creamy? <laughs> creepy. Would you rather have a creamy mouth or a dry mouth? Dry. Really? Creamy? I don't want a creamy mouth. <laughs> Probably make reading easier, though, if your mouth is creamy. I don't think so. How do you know? You never tried it. You never had a creamy mouth. No one who knows me will doubt the duty thus self-imposed will be executed to the best of my ability with all that rigid impartiality all that cautious examination into facts into facts and diligent collation of authorities which should never distinguish him who aspires to the title of historian that was one sentence you're welcome <laughs> duty <laughs> so what did he say that he's going to basically tell us like a historian would tell us about this dutch town oh okay by the united aid of medals, manuscripts, and inscriptions, I am enabled to say, positively, 
that the borough of Vondervotimitimus has existed from its origin in precisely the same condition which it at present preserves. What was his name? <laughs> you heard me the first time. <laughs> well, you're probably going to have to say it more times, but what was the name? Vonder... What? It's a borough of Vondervotimitimus. I wonder if you could just say, like, Vonder Von Mitt or something. You know? Vonder... Vondervotimitis. Say Vondervot. Vondervot. You guys care if she just says Vondervot instead of Vondervot von Vondervot von Vondervot Every Dutch person's screaming right now. Say it! <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> of the date, of this origin, however, I grieve that I can only speak with that species of indefinite definiteness, <laughs> which mathematicians are, at times, forced to put up with in certain algebraic formulae. Formulae? Formulae. Formula. Just formula? There's an E at the end. Formula. I would just say formula. I need new classes. We don't need to be fancy here and say formulae. The day I may thus say in regard to the remoteness of its antiquity cannot be less than any assignable quantity whatsoever. So we don't care about the date, I guess. TLDR. We don't give a shit what day it is. <laughs> I'm going to give you an accurate historical <laughs> recollection of this, but we don't care about the date. I know. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? That is not how historians do their jobs. Touching the derivation of the name von der Vaat, I confess myself with sorrow, equally at fault, among a multitude of opinions upon this delicate point. Some acute, some learned, some sufficiently the reverse. I am able to select nothing which ought to be considered satisfactory. Perhaps the idea of Grog's vig, nearly confident with that of Krupawanti, is to be cautiously preferred. It runs Vondervat, Vonderligedondervant, Viscosi, Bish. What? It's literally Dutch. He's literally just saying a bunch of Dutch words I don't even know. This derivative, to say the truth, is still countenanced by some traces of the electric fluid evident on the summit of the steeple of the house of the town council. Electric fluid? I'm not a scientist, but what? The electric fu fluid? Yeah. Alcohol? Battery acid? Ooh, battery acid. Oh, what a fucking story to pick. Sounds like Edgar Allan Poe didn't exactly understand electricity. <laughs> <laughs> he was a writer. I do not choose, however, to commit myself on a theme of such importance and must refer the reader, desirous of information, to the or attack. Lady Rubus Bittervistress of Dundergoots. See oh, also Dundergoots. Blunderboozard. Blunderboozard. <laughs> the Derivation Boos, page 27 to 5010. You're losing me on this. <laughs> Folio Gothic edit. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, go read a book next chapter perfect notwithstanding the obscurity which thus envelops the date of the foundation of von der Vaat and the deriv derivation of its name there can be no doubt as i said before that has always existed as we find it at this epoch what is that epoch mm -hmm. um I see that word a lot, but I've never really heard it out loud, and I don't know what it means. Epoch is a period of time in history or a person's life, typically one marked by notable events or particular characteristics. Okay. He really just summed up everything he's already said in that one singular word, so I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's, like, memeing on the readers. Like, maybe? Fuck, holy he's shit, like, all this... D okay, I'm sorry about all of these Dutch words. I don't speak Dutch. The fuck, dude? Why? You want to not read this one? I think maybe it stops. Okay. The oldest man in the borough, 
can remember not the slightest difference in the appearance of any portion of it. And indeed, the very suggestion of a possibility is considered an insult. The site of the village is in perfectly circular in a perfectly circular valley. That sounds man-made. About a quarter of a mile in circumference and entirely surrounded by gentle hills over whose summit the people have never yet ventured to pass. For this, they assign the very good reason they do not believe there is anything at all on the other side. Sounds like a bunch of idiots. There wasn't that one dude that was like, I'm going to go to the top of that hill, Mm -hmm. mountain, and just go to the other side. Did you ever watch the M. Night Shyamalan movie, The Village? Yes. That's what this reminds me of. That they're like, there's nothing out there. It's just danger, but really... It's just very, very danger. Very, very danger, but that's a lie. No spoilers. Round the skirts of the valley, which is quite level and paved throughout with flat tiles, extends a continuous row of 60 little houses. These having their backs on the hills must look, of course, to the center of the plain, which is just 60 yards from the front door of each dwelling. Every house has a small garden before it with a circular path, a sundial, and 24 cabbages. (laughs) Okay. Edgar Allan Poe is memeing on us right now. (laughs) This is like, what the fuck, dude? The buildings themselves are precisely alike that one can in no manner be distinguished from the other. Owing to the vast antiquity and style of architecture is somewhat odd, but it is not for that reason the less strikingly picturesque. They are fashioned of hard burned little bricks red with black ends, so the walls look like a chessboard upon a great scale. That's like bizarre. Wait, each wall looks like a chessboard or Mm -hmm. all of their walls together look like a chessboard? I think, like, each individual wall. Okay. Not a checkerboard. (laughs) The gables are turned to the front, and there are cornices as big as the rest of the house over the eaves and over the main doors. The windows are narrow and deep with very tiny panes and a great deal of sash. What is that? Sass? Sash. But it reminded me of sass. Mm. What is sash? Don't. No. Sash on a window or hung sash window is made of one or more movable panels or sashes. The individual sashes are traditionally paned windows, but can now contain an individual sheet of glass. So what did he say? The windows are narrow and deep with very tiny panes and a great deal of sash. Oh, that's weird. So they're all like openable? All the little teeny panes? (laughs) No, sash is like the little sticks that separate the windows. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So there's like a whole bunch of little tiny panels of glass Mm -hmm. set in all this like sash. Okay, so what the fuck is this town? It is fucking weird, dude. I think that's what he's describing. It's like a weird town with 60 houses in a row with checker or chess walls and 24 cabbages in each lawn. (laughs) I wonder what the deal is with the 24 cabbages. Like, what's up? On the roof is a vast quantity of tiles with long curly ears. Nope, read that right. The woodwork throughout is of dark hue and there is much carving about it with but a trifling variety of pattern for time out of mind. The carvers of Von der Vaught have never been able to carve more than two objects, a timepiece and a cabbage. But these they do exceedingly well and intersperse them with singular ingenuity wherever they find room for the chisel. The dwellings are much alike inside as out and the furniture is all upon one plan. The floors are of square tiles and chairs and tables of black-looking wood with thin, crooked legs and puppy feet. The mantelpieces are wide and high and have not only timepieces and cabbages sculptured over the front, but the real timepiece, which makes a prodigious ticking on the top in the middle with a flower pot containing a cabbage 
standing on each extremity by way of Outrider. <laughs> they really fucking like these cabbages. Like, what's their obsession with the cabbages? They have cabbages carved into their mantelpiece. They have a cabbage potted on their mantelpiece. And they have cabbages in their lawn. <laughs> Dude, the, this is where the people from the Avatar that are like all about their cabbages. Yeah. And all they're all descendants from this person. Yeah. My cabbages! <laughs> Between each cabbage and the timepiece again. <laughs> oh my god. Is it is this real? Like, are they actually talking about the fruit cab or not the fruit, the vegetable cabbage, or are we is is this a different term like, for something else? I couldn't imagine. It's like a play on words, maybe. But I don't know. I think a cabbage is a fucking vegetable. I think they're just talking about cabbages. Um, between each cabbage in the timepiece again is a little China man having a large stomach with a great round hole in it through which is seen a dial plate of a watch. So they just have like a person stomach cut out carving and then it's a watch. That's weird. These are fucking creepy cabbage people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If anyone is obsessed with cabbages this much, like, don't trust them. There's something weird going on. The fireplaces are large and deep with fierce, crooked-looking fire dogs. There is a constantly... There is constantly a rousing fire and a huge pot over it full of sauerkraut and pork, to which the good woman of the house is always busy in attending. She is a fat... <laughs> Wait. She's a fat bitch. <laughs> That's what you're gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> she is a little fat old lady with blue eyes and a red face and wears a huge cap like a sugar loaf ornamented with purple and yellow ribbons. Her dress is of orange colored Lindsay Woolsey made very full behind and very short in the waist. Okay, what's what's all this adding up to, you know? I don't know. And indeed, very short in other respects, not reaching below the middle of her leg. This is somewhat thick, and so are her ankles. <laughs> Dude, are we sure this isn't fucking Devil in the Belfry by Christopher Paolini? This is, like, weird, dude. It's, like, weird description. Um, uh, but she has a fine pair of green stockings to cover them. Her shoes of pink leather are fastened each with a bunch of yellow ribbons puckering up in the shape of a cabbage. <laughs> Dude, these people are like way too obsessed about cabbages. It's like every description we get is like, da-da-da-da-da, in the shape of a cabbage. Like, the fuck? I feel like, what does this mean? In her left hand, she has a little heavy Dutch watch. In her right hand, she wields a, a ladle cabbage. <laughs> for the sauerkraut and pork. Which, by the way, a sauerkraut is just pickled cabbage. fucking cabbage. By her side, there stands a fat tabby cat with a gilt toy repeater tied to its tail, which the boys have their, f have their fastened by the way of a quiz. The boys themselves are, all three of them, in the garden attending the pig. They are each two feet in height. They have three cornered cocked hats, purple waistcoats reaching down to their thighs, buckskin knee breeches, red stockings, heavy shoes with big silver buckles, long stirred out coats with large buttons, mother of pearl. Why do I care about the mother of pearl buttons? Each two it's really painting a picture has a pipe in his mouth and little dumpy watch and a little dumpy watch in his right hand. He takes a puff and a look and a look and a puff. The pig, which is corpulent and lazy, is occupied now in picking up the stray leaves that fall from the cabbages. And now in giving a kick behind the at the gilt repeater. Repeater, repeater, which the urchins have also tied to his tail in order to make him look as handsome as the cat. Right at the front door in a high-backed leather bottom armchair with crooked legs and puppy feet like the table 
it seated the old man of the house himself. He is an exceedingly puffy little old gentleman. <laughs> he is an exceedingly puffy little old gentleman with big circular eyes and a huge double chin. <laughs> so in the contrast of like how dark usually Edgar Allan Poe is. Like, you know how, like, dark Tim Burton usually is? But yeah. then when he draws, like, bright, like, type of mm -hmm. characters and, like, settings, it's always, like, really fat, puffy people and, like, round cheeks and, like, red yeah. tinted cheeks. And it's, like, everything looks like baby, you know? Like, little puppy dog. Like, yeah. everything looks, like, too cutesy. Yeah, it's, this like... This is the type of, like, contrast I'm getting with, like, Edgar Allan Poe's writing. He's, like, either really fucking dark, like... The last story we read, mm -hmm. a mask of, like, literal dead person from the Red Death walking around, black cloaked figure in a red room, black walls, to a puffy little old woman that has, like, fucking cabbage shoes on or something, <laughs> and then a puffy little old man sitting at his table eating his pork and sauerkraut. Yeah, it's definitely given me, like, I think specifically, like, Edward Scissorhands vibes where like in the little 1950s like town it's all like ice cream fucking colors you know what I mean but like make it the 1800s with a really heavy emphasis on cabbage instead <laughs> of ice cream and really emphasize the cabbage his dress resembles that of the boys and I need say nothing farther about that Thank you. All the difference is that his pipe is somewhat bigger than theirs and he can make a greater smoke. Like them, he has a watch, but he... I thought we weren't going to talk about it. But he carries his watch in his pocket. To say the truth, he has something of more importance than a watch to attend to. And what that is, I shall presently explain. Perfect. He, he sits with his right leg upon his left knee wears a grave countenance and always keeps one of his eyes at least resolutely bent upon certain remarkable object in the center of the plane. This object is situated in the steeple of the house of the town council. The town council are all very little round, oily, intelligent men <laughs> with big saucer eyes and fat double chins and have their coats much longer and their shoe buckles much bigger than the ordinary inhabitants of Von der Vaat. Since my sojourn in the borough, they have had several special meetings and have adopted these three important resolutions. That it is wrong to alter the good old course of things. That there is nothing tolerable out of Von der Vaat and that we will stick by our clocks and our cabbages. <laughs> These people are obsessed with fucking cabbages. This is fucking whack. Maybe people talked about the devil in the belfry because of the fucking weird cabbage people. And they were like, you don't need to read this. <laughs> it's weird and cabbagey. <laughs> it should be called the fucking... <laughs> cabbage people. Yeah. I was going to say, like, the timepieces and the cabbages. Clocks and cabbages. That would have been a better title. Ooh, Belfry, isn't that usually like, oh no, that's a bell tower, I was going to say, isn't that like a clock tower? I mean, I think that's where clock towers like came from though, because I think the bell is supposed to toll every hour on the hour, so people can tell time. So they can tell that it's been an hour yeah. since the last time they heard the bell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they know when to go look at their cabbages next. My cabbages! Above the session room of the council in the steeple... And in the steeple is the belfry, where exist, and has existed time out of mind, the pride and wonder of the village, the great clocks of the borough of Von der Vaat. And this is the object to which the eyes of the old gentlemen are turned, who sit in the leather-bottomed armchairs. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> getting out of the cabbages. The great clock has seven faces, one in each of the seven sides of the steeple so that it can be readily seen from all quarters. Its faces are large and white, and its hands heavy and black. There is a belfry man whose sole duty is to attend to it, but this duty is the most perfect of sinecures. 
for the clock of Van der Vaat was never yet known to have anything the matter with it. Until lately, the bare supposition of such a thing was considered heretical, from the remotest period of antiquity to which the archives have reference. The hours have been regularly struck by the big bell, and indeed the case was just the same with all the other clocks and watches in the burrow. Never was such a place for keeping the true time. When the large clapper thought properly to say, 12 o'clock, all its obedient follow followers opened their throats simultaneously and responded like a very echo. In short, the good burgers were fond of their sauerkraut and they were very proud of their clocks. Wait, did I just hear you say that right? At three o'clock, everybody in the village would say <laughs> three o'clock? He's like personifying the clock. Oh, okay. He's saying that when the big clock says it's noon, all the other little clocks in the houses, <laughs> oh. like all of their okay, like okay, okay. dinging and donging is at the same time. For some reason, the way that I heard you read that was that when the <laughs> clock chimed, everybody in the town looked at the clock and like said the time out loud. And that was giving me super creepy cabbage people vibes. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I feel like I would have almost enjoyed that a little bit better because that's just even creepier. Instead of whatever the fuck he's setting up with these <laughs> cabbage people for. <laughs> yeah. All people who hold sinecure offices are held in, mo in more or less respect. And the Belfry, man of Vonder Vaught, has the most perfect of sinecures. He is the most perfectly respected of any man in the world. He is the chief dignitary of the borough. And the very pigs look up to him with sentiment of reverence. His coattail is very far longer. His pipe, his shoe, buckles, his eyes, and his stomach very far bigger than those of any other old gentleman in the village. And as to his chin, it is not only double, but triple. From what, all the fucking cabbages he's been eating? I don't know. If these people are just eating fucking sauerkraut, how are they getting so fat? It must be the pork. It must be the pork. Must be eating a lot of fucking pork. You know how much fucking pork you'd have to eat? Why do I feel like he's kind of being like, is Edgar Allan Poe racist against Dutch people? <laughs> is this supposed to be like a, like a, like a smear campaign against Dutch people? I don't really understand what's going on here. I, I guess we'll find out. I mean, um, so far I, I didn't really get that vibe. Just felt like he was describing weird people I, I mean it could just be weird cabbage people i have thus painted the happy estate of van der Vaat, alas that is so fair a picture should never experience a reverse there has been long a saying among the wisest inhabitants that no good can come from over the hills and it really seemed that the words had in, in them something of the spirit of prophecy it wanted five minutes of noon on the day before yesterday when there appeared a very odd-looking object on the summit of the ridge of the eastward. Such an occurrence, of course, attracted universal attention, and every little old gentleman who sat in a leather-bottomed armchair turned one of his eyes with a stare of dismay upon the phenomenon, still keeping the other upon the clock in the steeple. They're just like, with their eyeballs. They can move their eyeballs independently like a chameleon. Is that like the cabbage power? Maybe we should eat more is cabbage. That, is that a power you get from the eating cabbage? Lots of cabbage, Dude, sauerkraut, <laughs> and pork? By the time that it wanted only three minutes <clears throat> to noon, the droll object in question was perceived to be a very diminutive foreign-looking young man. He kill him. <laughs> different kill him. He was really the most finicky little personage that ever had ever been seen in Van der Vaat. His countenance was of a dark snuff color. And he had a long hooked nose, pea eyes, a wide mouth, an excellent set of teeth. I'm uncomfortable. Why? I don't know. I've, the, his descriptions are making like pea eyes. So, like, tiny little fucking eyes. Yeah. A big hooked nose, a wide mouth, but perfect teeth. Yeah. 
That just reminds me of like a caricature from Pirates of the Caribbean. I feel like, who smiled like big in that movie and it was like a big scene? No. Like, in the movie? Yeah. I was talking about the ride. Oh. Like one of those like wild caricatures they have like. Yeah. With, like they're almost like goofy looking faces. You're like, that's not what a human looks like. Um, set of teeth, which latter he seemed anxious of displaying as he was grinning from ear to ear. With what mustachios and whiskers, there was none of the rest of his face to be seen. His head was uncovered and his hair neatly done in papillotes. His dress was a tight-fitting swallow-tailed black coat from one of whose pockets dangled a vast length of white handkerchief. Black Kershmer knee breeches, black stockings, and stumpy looking pumps with huge bunches of black satin ribbon for bows. Under one arm, he carried a huge chapeau de bras. Sorry, JD. <laughs> chapeau de bras. A chapeau de bras. And under the other, a fiddle nearly five times as big of it as himself. Fiddle? That's not a fiddle. That's a cello. Right? He said five times as big as himself. Maybe he's really tiny. He's like a, like a, <gasps> yeah, that's a cello. <laughs> Und and under the other, a fiddle nearly five times as big of himself. Maybe he's like a little guy. Like maybe he's like a little fairy man. Okay. Also, can I just say, historically, the devil has a fiddle. And we know this when he went down to Georgia. Yeah, he was looking for a soul to steal. I don't trust He was in a man. bind because he was way behind. And he was willing to make a deal. Fuck. I just am like, this is sus. Also, is the... Ch is he going to come across a young boy sawing on a piddle, fiddle and playing it hot? Is he going to jump up on a hickory stump and say, Vondervat, let me tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I'm kind of like interested now about this man. <laughs> um, in his left hand was a gold snuff box from which he, as he capered down the hill, cutting all manner of fantastic steps, he took snuff incessantly with an air of the greatest possible self-satisfaction. God bless me. Here was a sight for the honest burgers of Von der Vaught. To speak plainly, the fellow had, in spite of his grinning, an audacious and sinister kind of face. Like the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. P.I. devil. <laughs> <laughs> and as he curvetted right into the village, the old stumpy appearance of his pumps excited no little suspicion. And many a burger who beheld him that day would have given a trifle for a peep beneath the white cambric handkerchief, which hung so obtrusively from the pocket of his swallow-tailed coat. What a description. I think back in the 1800s, this would have made more sense because a swallow-tailed coat, I think, is like a fancy coat. Yeah, it's like a whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. Yeah. For fancy people. But what mainly occasioned a righteous indignation was that the scoundrelly popinjay. What's that? Popinjay? Yeah. Like P O P I N J A Y. Is that like a type of shirt or something? Or like a vest or something that pops out from your jacket? I don't know. A conceited, foppish, or excessively talkative person. So he was just like chatty then. He just came down and was like, I be bop, I be boop bop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> While he cut a fandango here and a whirligig there, did not seem to have the remotest idea in the world of such a thing as keeping time in his steps. The fucking audacity. These fucking cabbage people are weird. They're like, they seem like methodical time cabbage people i don't like their vibe i'm like loosen up dude <laughs> loosen up the good people of the borough had scarcely a chance however to get their eyes thoroughly open when 
just as it wanted half a minute to noon, the rascal bounced, as I say, right into the midst of them, gave a chasse here and a balancé there, and then after a pirouette and a pas de zephyr, pas I don't know, I don't speak in French. Pigeon winged himself right up to the belfry of the house of the town council, where the wonder stricken belfry man sat smoking in a state of dignity and dismay. But the little chap seized him at once by the nose, gave it a swing and a pull, clapped the big chapeau de bras abong his, abong his head. Abong. <laughs> Sat abong his head. I'm let do from my <laughs> Knocked it down over his eyes and mouth, and then lifting up the big fiddle, beat him with it Holy so long shit. and so soundly that what with the belfry man being so fat, the fiddle being so hollow, you would have sworn there was a regiment of double bass drummers all beating the devil's tattoo up in the belfry of the steeple of Vondervat. Damn. Wow. Okay. There is no knowing to what desperate act of vengeance this unprincipled attack might have aroused the inhabitants, but for the important fact that it now wanted only a half a second to noon, the bell was about to strike, and it was a matter of absolute and preeminent necessity that everybody should look well at his watch. It was evident, however, that just at this moment, the fellow in the steeple was doing something that he had no business to do with the clock. But as it now began to strike, nobody had any time to attend to his maneuvers. They, for they had all to count the strokes of the bell as it sounded. One, said the clock. Vaughn echoed every little old gentleman in every leather-bottomed armchair in Von der Vaught. So you were right. They are... They are audibly saying it. What the fuck? Yeah, this is creepy. This is so weird. Also, I'm kind of glad this like little devil man came in here and decided to fuck their shit up. They need it. <laughs> they needed it. They needed their lives turned upside down. <laughs> they needed their way of life to be changed. It wasn't hurting anybody, but fuck them. <laughs> fuck them and their weird cabbage ways. <laughs> Vaughn said his watch also. Vaughn said the watch of his vrow, and Vaughn said the watches of the boys in the little gilt repeaters on the tails of the cat and the pig. Just imagine some old man sitting there, like, eating his pork and sauerkraut, and it's like, Dong! and he's like, Vaughn, <laughs> and then like, Dong, dun, 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 dun. um, two continued the big bell, and do repeated the repeaters. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, said the bell. Dree, vor, vibe, zax, zeben, eit, noin, den, answered the others. Is, is that really Dutch, do you think? Or is he just being rude about their accent? Or is he just conveying an accent? It might just be conveying an accent. Eleven, said the big one. Eleven, assented the little ones. <laughs> Twelve, said the bell. Dvelf, they replied, perfectly satisfied and dropping their voices. Und zwölf it is, said the little old gentleman, putting up their watches. But the big bell had not done with them yet. Thirteen, said he. Der Tufel. They must be just speaking Dutch then. Gasped the little old gentleman, turning pale, dropping their pipes and putting down all their right legs from over their left knees. Oh, fuck. Their two full grown Right leg they. over left knee? Holy shit. Yeah. That's how I sit. Uh-oh. How do you feel about cabbage right now? I'm hungry. Me too. I would like some cabbage and You want to go pork? get sauerkraut and pork? Okay. This fucking story is actually magic. Every time you tell it, you turn into a, a double resident. A fat <laughs> Dutch man. Yeah. Okay. They're toyful. Wait, where's my they. watch? Uh oh. Dong. One. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay. They're toyful, groaned they. Dirteen, dirteen. Mein Gott. It is dirteen o'clock. 
why attempt to describe the terrible scene which ensued? All von der Vaught flew at once into a lamentable state of uproar. Vaught is combed to mine pelly, roared the boys. I've got been hungry for this hour. Vaught is combed to mine kraut, screamed the vrows. It has been done to rags for this hour. Okay, like reading words that are like conveying an accent are hard. They sound hard. Vot is combed to mine pipe, swore all the little old gentlemen. Donder and Blitzen, it has been smoked out for this hour. And they filled them up again in a great rage. Sinking back into their armchairs, puffed away so fast and so fiercely that the whole valley was immediately filled with impenetrable smoke. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, the cabbages all turned very red in the face, and it seemed if his, <laughs> as if old Nick himself had taken possession of everything in the shape of a timepiece. The clocks carved upon the furniture took to dancing as if bewitched, while those upon the mantelpieces could scarcely contain themselves for fury, and kept such a continual striking of thirteen and such a frisking and wiggling of their pendulums as was really horrible to see, but worse than all, neither the cats nor the pigs could put up any longer with the behavior of the little repeaters tied to their tails and resented it by scampering all over the place, scratching and poking and squeaking and screeching and caterwauling and squalling and flying into the faces and running under the petticoats of the people and creating altogether the most abominable din and confusion which is which it is possible for a reasonable person to conceive and to make all matters still more distressing the rascally little scape grace in the steeple was evidently exerting himself to the utmost every now and then one might catch a glimpse of the scoundrel through the smoke there he sat in the belfry upon the belfry man who was lying flat upon his back. Did you fucking kill him? I think he might have. Fuck. In his teeth, the villain held the bell rope, which he was jerking about with his head, <laughs> raising such a clatter that my ears ring again every, even to think of it. On his lap lay the big fiddle at which he was scraping out of all time and tune with both hands making a great show of the nincompoop of playing Judy O'Flanagan and Patty O'Rafferty. Affairs being thus miserably situated, I left the place in disgust and now appeal for aid to all lovers of correct time and fine kraut. Let us proceed in a body to the borough and restore the ancient order of things in von der Vaught by ejecting that little fellow from the steeple. And that's the end of it. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I, that was not creepy. That was the most ludicrous thing I've ever read in my life. <clears throat> that was, I mean, I'm, I'm like on the side of the villain at the end of that story, you know? Like some dude just comes down and starts fucking with them, like memeing on them. Yeah. He's like observing them from up at the top of the village, looking at these like meticulous, like, Ding, bon, bon, don, 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 don. Like, like creepy little crazy people. cabbage people. And he goes, you know what? I bet if I go ring that fucking bell a bunch of times and start playing my fiddle, <laughs> it'll really fuck with them. So he's like, he just goes down the mountain and starts yanking on the rope with his teeth. And he's like, like probably not even that good either. It's probably just like. <laughs> 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 everyone's fucking losing their shit oh my god what a ridiculous story that had nothing to do with a devil and barely anything to do with the belfry what the fuck we need to like vet these stories i think a little bit yeah we might have to just so that was the one one off you know what sometimes creepy doesn't have to be like macabre it can just be like what the fuck weird, right? Like Midsummer, that movie. 
Like it definitely had like creepster creepy vibes, but it was like a really bright, pretty movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> that was definitely the one off. I do sure. like kind of want like sauerkraut now. Though. Seriously? Like a little. You want to yeah. forego our chicken plans? Nah, we should get the chicken. You want the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like weird. I feel fucking fucked up after reading that. <laughs> that was like a weird story. I just like, what? I oddly feel like I want fucking like fresh cabbage sauerkraut. Not like old weird sauerkraut, like good sauerkraut and pork for some reason. Like a yeah, nice for... pork cut, you know? Mm-hmm. Not like... um Sausage. No. Not like... um like I want like a, a loin, pork loin, mm -hmm. not like a pork cutlet or something, you know. Oh okay. Like a nice big piece of pork. I don't really like pork. But you know what I'm saying? Like that story made me want to eat that combination of food. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird? Ham and sauerkraut. Why the fuck was that a thing? My parents would do that every year for like New Year's. It's not like good luck. Yeah, but isn't it supposed to be pork and sauerkraut? Ham. Is pork. Yeah, but ham is, like, different than, like, a fucking tenderloin cut of pork. Like, I mean... Ham is, like, a smoked, cured yeah. pork item. Yeah. And, like, pork is, like, a raw meat that you cook it, like, however, like, a tenderloin yeah. or pork loin is, like, different than, like, a slice of ham. Like a honey, honey cooked... Yeah, like a honey glazed ham or some yeah. shit. I don't know, maybe they just really liked ham better. I don't know. I think, like, pork would be, like, better to have with sauerkraut than ham. I mean, I think pork sausage would be better over all of them. Like, brat? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Fuck. I could go for some brat and sauerkraut. Oh, I should... You know what sucks is, like, this was a story about, like, food a little bit. Like, they just <laughs> talked about food a little bit, and I'm hungry, and I'm like, now I'm just, like... Extra hungry. Like, extra fucking hungry, dude. What time is it? I mean, we could just go grab pork and sauerkraut. 5.58, baby. Um, I'm fucking hungry, though. Yeah, I'm starving. I'm going to wither up and die. Whoa, me too. Do we have anything else to add to this fucking fiasco of a story? This fucking um, cabbage patch kid of a story? I'm, like, weirdly pleased with the story. Like, I'm kind of impressed that it was cre like a creepy story, but it wasn't like classic macabre. macabre Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. It wasn't like death and decay and fucking, you know, blood, bodies, and booze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. He does like to include the alcohol a lot. That it, oh, I was saying booze and the like ghosts. Like, oh. Booze. I was thinking like booze. Booze. <laughs> booze. Blood and bodies. Hell yeah. yeah. That it was like the people, the atmosphere were creepy. Mm -hmm. And then like in comes this villain, villainous figure, but he's actually just a fucking shit posting <laughs> meme lord. He came straight from fucking a subreddit somewhere. <laughs> came from a subreddit. <laughs> Where are you from, stranger? A subreddit. subreddit. <laughs> the stranger's name was a redditor. Fuck. That was, I am actually, like, really impressed with that story. And I'm like, I wonder if that's why I've heard of that story. Mm. Because people are like... Oh, yeah, it's creepy, but it's not. Yeah, that people are like, wow, you should read The Devil in the Belfry because... It just hits different, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, the setup was, like, pretty whack, though. <laughs> you know, the whole, like, super descriptiveness... And it's like, it really feels like he ran out of steam while running it, writing it. Yeah. You know, like he was like super descriptive, 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 descriptive. And I get it. Like, you know, trying to put me there, what you're describing. And then it just kind of like, and then a villain came in, like everybody freaked out. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye. You know. That, yeah, I agree. I feel like he front loaded his short story too much and then yeah. had to make it a short story. So he like. You know, it kind of feels like the way Moulin Rouge feels, where it's like super hype in the beginning. Same with The Great Gatsby. And then mm -hmm. it kind of like just fizzles out at the end. Um, 
I think also the oval portrait was similar. 80% description, 20% story. Yeah. It's it, like JD said. Yep. Exactly. And then I and then I'm like, what well, you didn't give me enough of what I even want though now. The oval portrait. I'm like, I want about I want to know about that painter though. Like what's up with that story specifically? Mm -hmm. Don't get it. Then this like creepy little fucking fiddle playing devil man. I'm gonna hear about the little pee eyed fiddle playing devil man. Yeah, like tell me about Even him. Even though it's a cello. <laughs> He was just really drunk and couldn't remember the name for a cello. He's like, what the fuck is He's that like, big fucking fiddle called? It's like a really big fiddle. Like, it's and like really a cello big. is not even like a big fiddle. A cello is just a big violin, you know? A fiddle is just a violin, though. They're played differently, though. Right. So, But you don't play a cello like you would play a fiddle. So you don't have a, f a giant cello or a giant fiddle. You'd have a giant violin, you know? Because... Mm -hmm you like play him the you know <laughs> yeah. you're not like on a you can't you know so it'd be a giant violin why couldn't he just use a fucking fiddle that would sound like more screechy I think than a cello well maybe it just was a giant screechy fiddle did it say it was five times bigger than he was or just... Yeah. Maybe he was just like a little guy, though. <laughs> then how did he grab the guy by the nose and punch him? With his whole hand. <laughs> and he yanked him around. And then he beat the shit out of him with his fiddle. Cello. <laughs> the devil went down to bottom of Memphis <laughs> with a cello made of gold. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I liked that story. It was fucking weird and I didn't really know where it was going at the beginning. But I'm not mad about it. Yeah, it was fun. I think it was a fun story. A fun, creepy story. Mm -hmm. Versus a creepy, creepy story. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just imagine grabbing somebody by their nose, especially like back in the 18 whatevers, mm -hmm. where like bathing wasn't like a common occurrence. And just like think how oily their little fucking juicy, oily Ew. nose would be. Trying to grab under that thing and it would just like slip out from your fingers, you know? Ew. Noses are gross. <laughs> And on that note. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you also think noses are gross, hit that like button and sub subscribe. Sub 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 subscribe and hit that bell notification for more nose content. Oh. No, for more <laughs> of these great, fantastic videos that we're producing for you. You're welcome. I assume you said thank you. What can I say except you're, you're welcome. welcome. And We'll see you in the next one. I would like to know. <laughs> I just would like to know what the inspiration for that fucking story was. That was a whack, dude. Let me go turn everybody on for a second. Okay. Or. <laughs> That's all you guys get is one second. One second.